Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome. I'm Eustace Farmer, and I hope you're doing well. So today, I would like to present to you the Fent 700 Vario series um, by AGO Modding. In my opinion, these are probably the best Fent tractors. Well, not probably. They are the best Fent tractors that I have come across to date. Um... And, I mean, I have scoured and trolled the mod sites, and I have <laughs> downloaded um, a lot of tractors in general and a lot of fence, and they've ranged from anywhere from being, eh, okay, to pretty good, to downright garbage and wacky. Um, I've had my share of glitchy, bouncing tractors and so forth and so on um, with bad sounds. I mean, you know, you've probably been through this yourself with several different... Uh, mods so but these are the exception to the rule and that being said <laughs> um, I'll show you here when you can walk up this close to a tractor and look at the textures and say oh darn man that's a deal breaker when you can't say that then the developers know they have done their job and I mean these are great um, Giants quality in my book and I think in some ways they exceed what Giants puts out um, even some of the little details like look at the tires they're not all clean and armor all looking um, they have a little bit of that weathering on them and I really like that a lot because even a brand new tractor when it comes off of the assembly line and they driving it out to the lot to be transported and when they're unloading them at the dealership and moving them around, they're going to get a little, they're going to get a little wear, a little, a little dirty. Um, so I think that's been represented quite well here. Um, you do, as you see here, have your choice of any color that's available in the Giants Diable color palette. So you can customize the color to suit your mood. <laughs> um, however, the rims um, come in two color choices only um, the aluminum and the default red so but it's nice that they have those couple options for the rims there's a whole host of features so let me go ahead and get right to it so I can show you and quit blabbing around now um, one thing that's really cool is this little animation that it shows you getting into the tractor now if you're in a hurry or if the animation gets sticky because sometimes it does get a little sticky especially when you're close to another object just press your delete button on the keyboard and that will skip you through the animation it doesn't delete anything it doesn't harm anything that's the button that they assigned so I'll show you but first let's do the animation getting in and let's see oh, had to be in cab view there we go and it shows you stepping up and getting into the tractor and that really gives it a nice touch of realism like it a lot go ahead and start it up for you okay so I'm gonna get out and then we're gonna skip the animation so you can see what that's like and delete and we're in so I have the drive control mod so when I get in the cab, it's a bit more quiet. But as you hear, it's got a really nice, nice beefy sound to it. I really like it a lot. Okay, so now there's six tractors in the pack and they have a range in horsepower. So I'll walk down the line. Let me shut it off because it does get a little noisy. <laughs> okay, so the black one here is a 240 horsepower and this is the largest in the pack and then the blue one is a 220 horsepower 
and then we get down to the red one and that is 200 so it kind of steps down in increments of 20 horsepower and then the bright green one which I did as a little tip of the hat to Klaus <laughs> that's 180 horsepower and then we've got 165 horsepower in the orange and 145 in the Fent green so um, now you're gonna look at these tractors and you're gonna say oh that's kinda weird they're all the same size but they've got you know different horsepower well kinda sorta but really not if you look at them from the back you can see that this one is a bit more narrow uh, and the wheels are more narrow and there is an option within the settings that I'll show you that you can um, make the tires wider you don't get the dual wheels but you can make them more wide so um, it looks like they're pretty much all the same height, but they get like progressively beefier as you see as you go up the line. That's see, it's getting to have a uh, a bit more of a beefier look, and then they've got the old fat bottom girl here. <laughs> um, while we're back here, I mean, take a look at the hydraulic servo ports and the linkages and all that. I mean, this looks fantastic. And these buttons do have functions. I'm going to show you. So let me go ahead and get back in here. And bear with me a little bit, because this thing has so many features, I might get a little jumbled up, but I'm going to try not to. <laughs> okay, let's start her back up just for giggles. Okay, and then I have... Now you have to have, if, you, if you've hidden your hood... You have to have it up for the IC control to work. Now, traditionally, on a lot of tractors, the IC control is engaged by hitting your space bar. On this one, it's your right control button that you press to get your IC. And you know the IC is on because you'll see all the little green rings all over the place. And when you hover your mouse over them, they pulsate. So you know you're on the right track. So, yes, you can open and close the doors and... Uh, the sunroof. Let it pulsate. There we go. And it's got a nice little light diffusing shade here, and it really does work. It does diffuse light, which is really cool. Um, if you don't have the adjustable mirror mod, well, good news, because on this vehicle, you can adjust your mirrors. And how you do that is on your number pad, not your number row, but on the number pad on your keyboard, press zero, and that's going to bring up your little cheat menu. And it's going to tell you how to do this. So as you see here on the top, it says keys. Left control will control the left and right function of the left mirror. Okay, so let's see. So I'm holding left control, and then I'm using my arrow keys to adjust side to side, up and down on the left. Now, to do the right mirror, I'm going to take this down so you can see better. You're still going to hold the left control button down, but instead of using your arrow keys, you're going to go to your number pad, and you're going to see little arrow symbols under the numbers 2, 4, 6, and 8. That's going to be controlling the direction of the mirrors for the right side. As you see here, it's fantastic. So now, I've just turned on, that's an, uh, that another thing, it does interfere <laughs> with one of their other buttons for the back work light. So 6 is uh, for the back work lights in the rear. And then number 9 is an indoor light, which is really cool at night, and I'll make it dark to show you. And the dashboard lights up, all the instruments light up, it's, it's really cool. And then your front work light is the keypad. And I'll also turn on the headlights for you. Again, the beacons. There we go. So, I will say that, of course, especially if you have a lower-end computer, the lights do tax your frame rates a little bit. I don't see a massive tank in frame rates, but you will lose a few FPS. And I've seen that even with the vanilla in-game tractors. Lights just tax your CPU a little bit. Um, so keep that in mind. All right. Okay. So let's go back inside of the cab here and turn our IC control back on. 
So you have your tilt wheel and a telescopic wheel. So if you have a big belly, you can tuck it right under that wheel. Just raise the wheel up and tuck it right under there. <laughs> and then your left and right turn signals. And as you see, they indicate even on the dashboard. Very realistic. Here's your engine start and stop. So like I said, it's like climbing in a real tractor as far as the functions go. <laughs> um, and one thing that's really cool about this, let's go ahead and click that on. Let me take off IC control so you can see better. Anything that's engaged on, on those little buttons there, you'll see the little green light next to it, so you know it's on. And when you hover your mouse over the little functions, it, up in your upper left corner menu, it's going to tell you what you're looking at here. So this is to activate the beacons. And this is to activate the front work light. And this one is the back work light. So really cool. And then we have our hazard warnings. And this is to turn on the lights. Oh, regular headlights. Okay. So anything with a green ring around it is an active feature. So let me shut this off. Just quicker to move around that way. Um, if you're using a keyboard to drive your tractor, you'll see that this works. It does not work if you're using a steering wheel um, or the SATEC control deck. It doesn't um, recognize that. But that's okay. Um, so this is to lower the linkages in the front and in the back. I don't have anything on there, so it's not going to work. Now, this is a great feature. This comes with your drive control mod. Um, you get your diff locks and your all-wheel drive and all that. Um, but if you don't have the drive control mod, it's okay because it's built into the tractor. So this will still work. Um, so here is, I think that would be the, um, the, uh, the rear-wheel drive, front-wheel drive, all-wheel drive, and then the PTO. So... Um, this doesn't have any function here. Uh, let's see here. Go up and have a look-see around. This puts out your caution placards. And then you can also... Let me find the little... There it is. You can open your back window. Whoop. Come on. There we go. And then over here, if you've got some little secret snacks that you want to hide away from somebody that's riding in the jump seat of your tractor, you could put them up in here. <laughs> hide your snicker bars. And then here is the foldable jump seat. Now, even when the jump seat's open, one thing that is a little bit of a shame is if you're in multiplayer and you have a friend that wants to ride around the tractor with you, it doesn't allow for a passenger, and some modded tractors I have noticed do allow for passengers. This this is just a purely aesthetic function, so um, it does not allow passengers. Okay, so I think that's it for the inside. Let me just go over it again with a fine-tooth comb. You do have this little computer panel that lights up. Um, it doesn't perform any functions. Uh, or interactions, but you know some of these little numbers do move around when you're uh, when you're going along there. Um, so it's just a nice little aesthetic touch. Okay, so now that we have that done, let's go and take a look. Let me get that off and zoom out a little bit, and I'll show you what's going on in the back here. Okay, so first of all, you click this, and this little menu is going to come up. And what you can do here is make the tires more wide and let me turn this off so I can move around as you see they change to Michelin tires and they become quite a bit chunkier good for doing field work you won't be making big deep uh, grooves in the soil uh, but it changes the rims back to the default color of red so that's one little tiny little ding <laughs> not really a big deal for me 
Um, okay, so the left mouse, this changes the color of the rims from aluminum to red, or they'll come in red, you could change them to aluminum. This does, if you see here, the little um, heat guard on the stack. It'll change it to silver, which I like on some colors. And then this one takes away the front loader brackets in the front. Let me see if I can work it from this way on the menu. Yeah, it's kind of hard to see, but it takes away these little brackets, just so you know. Um, so a lot of little neat features with this. Okay, and then to get rid of that, we'll take that away. This is going to um, see it lifts and lowers the linkage there. I like to have it lifted when I'm driving around so it's not getting caught up on the ground. And this is not active because there's nothing hooked up to it, but my assumption is with this, it's going to obviously lift and lower the back. So if you've got a trailer with a low hitch, you can lower the back down to get that trailer hooked up on there so that it doesn't fling you all over the map. <laughs> okay, so let's move around to the front. Okay. This little button you'll see here, let me move over. On the side, that's your hood or bonnet. Not a tremendously detailed engine, but it is good enough. And I mean, this is purely just to show off. There's really no reason to open the hood. So, <laughs> it's just a nice, cool, added little feature. And this is to raise your little counterweight holder there in the front so you're not smashing through everything. <laughs> and I think that's about it for the IC controls. And, I mean, that's a lot. So, let's go ahead... I'll pull it over here, and I'm going to show you, um, it comes with a front-loading arm and bucket attachment as well, and those can also be uh, colored. They're dyeable, so you can color those separately to match your mood. I did it in the, I was actually anticipating on hooking up the Kloss colored one, so let's do that. Let's have a little fun with this today. Shut you off. You take a break. You've done a good job today. <laughs> okay. So we'll hop in here. There we go. Oh, did I get in the red one? I did. All right, use this. Get it together. There we go. Okay. And you can also start it up and take off your parking brake while it's doing its little thing there if you don't want to skip the animation. Okay, so I'm going to warn you about hooking up this front loader bucket um, arm. <laughs> um, I pull back on my, on my lift joystick as soon as I start to hook up because it can really jump you all over the place. And when it's in a bad mood, it can fling you backwards. <laughs> so I'll show you what I mean. I won't do anything. Let's see if it happens. Okay, not too bad. But sometimes it'll fling you up in the air like a piece of popping corn. <laughs> now this, I like to make sure that it has a little height on it before I hook up the bucket. Because this is another, another thing that'll really give you a good bounce. There we go. If you have it too close to the ground, it's going to fling the tractor up in the air. <laughs> okay, so here's my observation with this. When I first looked at this bucket, I was like, holy mackerel, this is quite a bit larger than the in-game one that's offered through Stowe. Um, it's more wide, more deep. It's got a little add-on on the top to make it higher. So... I'm thinking, wow, this is going to hold some great capacity. It doesn't tell you the capacity. So I went into the XML files and looked. Didn't see anything. So I just went and scooped something and see what it said. So, much to my surprise, it holds 1,260 liters. Which is a disappointment. Because that little stole over there holds 1,860. 
So this is a bigger setup, but you're getting short at 600 liters. Now, granted, they said these are beta. I find that <laughs> hard to believe because they're so fantastic. I have yet to find a bug with them. Um, I've been using them for about a month, and I've done everything with them, and they've just been fantastic. So that being said, the developer said, no reason to write and complain, he said, because I know all the bugs. <laughs> okay. But um, now my personal opinion, this is not a fact, but my personal opinion is, is I don't know if they will come out of beta being that we're on the heels of Farming Simulator 2017 coming out the end of this year. So I've seen a big slowdown in the mod community as far as any epic mods coming out. So um, there's been a few, but it's I'm sure you can probably agree with me that it, it's kind of slowed down quite a bit. So anyway, let me go ahead and release the bucket. If you don't want to use the bucket and you don't mind you know, color coordinating things so much, you can hook up this front loader arm with the standard bucket, and you can also hook up to the standard stole arm with this tractor. So it all works. It's interchangeable. And this front loader setup that comes with the fent pack also works on your regular front loader tractors. Um, and I've tested on a few other modded tractors, and it works just fine. So... But it's kind of cool to be able to change the color. I'm just one of those kind of guys. <laughs> okay, so just a little demonstration. Just to show you that it hooks up. With my backing up skills, I just put the... There you go. No problems whatsoever. Works great. So let's see. I think I've covered pretty much everything with it. Um, again, I will leave a link down in the description, and I will type up a little cheat sheet. Oh, yes, I have not covered everything. Hold on a second. Hold the wire, Martha. <laughs> this is what I was going to tell you about earlier. So let's say you go to back up your tractor, and you're in the cab. Let me just get down here. And all of a sudden, you turn around, and you're like, whoa, what's happening here? I've turned into a three-year-old toddler. I can't see over the seat. Well, that's because when you're zooming in and out outside, you know, you're using your mouse scroll wheel. Well, if you do that by accident inside, it raises and lowers your seat. <laughs> so let's say that maybe you like to have it down a little lower when you're driving because you get more windshield. But when you want to back up, you want to raise your seat up higher all the way so you can see what you're doing. But when you come back, well, we're looking at ceiling, so we want to lower it back down a little bit. So that's what that does. Now, that's not a big mystery. I'm sure you would wind up figuring out about that on your own. However, let's say you get into things and you didn't notice that you've hit a button by accident, and now you're either over here or you're over here. And you're like, what happened? I'm, s I'm leaning crooked. This happened to me, and it took me a good half hour to figure out what the heck I did. And I kind of sort of retraced some of my steps of the buttons I was pushing. So, first of all, before I tell you how this is done, if this happens to you, just press the Z button on your keyboard, and that will snap you back to center. So, no worries. Don't throw your keyboard. It's going to be okay. <laughs> now... This is a, turns out to be a pretty great feature because it's simulating you kind of leaning to one side to look around the, the front of the tractor or the rear of the tractor. So if I hit button 5, it's going to have me lean to the right. And that increases my field of view on the right side, both front and back. And I'll show you. So, and then button 6. Now this is the number row, not your keypad. This is button 5 and 6 in your number row. So there you have it. So r you don't have to write it down. I'm going to put it on the cheat sheet because I guarantee for most of you, well, I shouldn't even insult you like that. All I know is for me personally, if I go a couple of months 
and it doesn't happen or I don't use it, I'll forget. And then I'll be like, oh, what, what keys did I use to do that? So I will put a little cheat sheet up there for you. Um, so that's, that's the mystery thing that I was going to tell you about. <laughs> so I was watching a Daggerwin video the other day where he was driving under some fruit trees with his tractor and he was saying, boy, I wish they made a tractor mod where the beacon lights would fold down. Maybe they'll make one someday. Well, here you go, Daggerwin. It's been here all along. This is a little feature that's kind of easy to miss, so... There you have it. Get this tractor, and you can fold your beacon lights down, and you can pull into low-hanging barns unobstructed, go under tree branches, and they won't get caught up. Just another very unique and much-needed function. So, that's awesome. So, anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope I've been informative, and I hope I've been a little inspiring. And I do hope that you'll download these tractors and enjoy them as much as I do. Um, if you find any bugs yourself with them that I have not come across, please do let me know. And I mean, obviously things behave differently based on what kind of computer you have and operating system you have. But I still would like to know everything um, and your, just your basic opinion. Um, so, yeah, please do make good use of the comments section. I welcome it all. So, until the next time, I'm going to say take care, be well, and I'll see you again very soon. Bye for now.